Hello, Professor Hanke. Thank you for joining us today. Good to be with you. We saw uh, hundreds of thousands of people across Chile have taken part in protests against the country's currency, uh, current pension system almost two weeks ago. Why, Professor Hanke? Well, th this all started in a curious way. Um, the former director of the gendarmerie, uh, the head of prisons in, in Chile, uh, revealed that uh, the payment being received for retirement was $8,000 a month and, and uh, th that this person was receiving. The big problem is that that was on the public pension system. And, and the public pension system in Chile was reserved for the army, the police, and the gendarmerie. So, and, and this person was an active socialist, left-wing agitator. So the implication was, I, I have a huge pension, and, and uh, it's a public pension, and you poor people who are saving for your private pension accounts are, are, not, are getting a bad deal, and you, you're getting much less money per month than I am. So, so that's actually how it started. Now, it started by an abuse of the, the old public system, in fact, because this, this retired gendarmerie uh, director was, is on the public system. So that's part of the thing. Now, it, it got going because of deceptions, falsehoods, and distortions, basically. You, you said there were hundreds of thousands of people in the, in the streets. No, there were actually 80,000 people in the streets in Santiago, which, which is a normal crowd for a, for a holiday event. That 80,000, by the way, includes counting children and uh, everyone in the, in the crowd. So this is my old 95% rule. 95% of what you read in the press is either false or irrelevant. Now, the claims that are being made against the private system by, by the, the left-wing socialist agitators are as follows, that the payouts uh, received in the private system are either low or more or less equivalent to, to the old public system. And the, the, the problem with that calculation, the, the apples and oranges problem crops up because by comparing these two systems, the calculations are made in such a way that they're, they're very distorted. And, and I can't get into the details. We don't have enough time. But if you, you actually normalize and do the right calculations, the private payout is three times higher than the public payout. Uh, of course, uh, it, that doesn't count as abusive kind of manipulation, the, the $8,000 per month example that I gave you that, that started the whole problem. The second thing is that the management fees for the private pension systems are, are excessive and high. And actually, the average management fee is six-tenths of one percent of the assets under management which is lower than the OECD average for, for pension funds. So we have the reality. The reality is that the private system has been in for 35 years. The average real, adjusted for inflation, real rate of return has been in excess of 8% per year. The system that's private is no longer a burden to the state. Uh, the state has nothing to do with it, so it doesn't contribute to the the fiscal deficit of the state. The third thing is it, it provided Chile with a huge boost in savings and investment. Uh, if you look at the amount under the private system now, it's about $170 billion. That's about 70% of Chile's GDP. So a huge amount of savings stimulated a lot of investment that they've calculated has added about a half a percentage point to the annual growth in Chile uh, during the last 35-year period. And, and then the proof of the pudding, the system's been copied by many countries with all kinds of diverse backgrounds. In, in Eastern Europe, Poland, you, you have Hong Kong in, in Asia, you have Sweden in, in Northern Europe, you have Peru in, in South America. So 
it, it has been copied. And I must add that the public system argument is, is bogus in the following sense, that the demographics for these public systems is such that they are impossible to sustain going forward. Most of them are actually bankrupt now, the, the, the public systems. By definition, you can't bankrupt a private system. The, the money goes in the system, and, and, and it's your money and your, your private account. But, but Professor Hanke, uh, isn't the private system, the capital uh, system, more uh, sensitive and more vulnerable to crisis, financial crisis, I mean, as was the case in 2008? Uh, no, not really, because the, there are specifications on what kinds of investments that, that you can make in the system. They, they aren't any more vulnerable than the, than, the, than the public system if the public system actually invests anything. In most cases, the public system doesn't invest anything. They're, they're in a huge deficit. They're in bankruptcy. And the only way they can pay people is to tax young people who are in the labor market, and that's part of the demographics. If you look at Bulgaria, for example, it's a very interesting case because you get this historic, what they call historical reversal. And the historical reversal is when the number of people in the age category 65 and over exceeds the number in the 0 to 14 year age group. And, and in Bulgaria, that occurred very early in, in the year 2000. It's one of the, the worst demographics. So thinking about a public system in Bulgaria, it's, it's just infeasible. It's just demographically, it can't be done. There are too many old people relative to young people.